Praise the Lord. We can still be sit down until I say we should stand up. In Jesus' name we pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, because of this morning. We glorify your name because you are the Lord. You will never change. We thank you, Lord, because you are Lord of God, the mighty one in battle. We thank you, Lord, because you are the one that's fighting our battle and you will fight it to the end. We glorify your name because of what you are doing in our life and what we still continue to do. Almighty Father, so I to our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, we come this morning, we pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will speak to our hearts. Whatsoever, Almighty Father, may be a stopping block in our life, in our way, in whatsoever, Father, we take away in Jesus' name. Ability to listen to you, Father, you will give unto us in Jesus' name. And you will let us keep your word in our mind. All devices of devil, Father, you will take away. And your name is going to be glorified. Thank you, O Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us be seated. Um, let us be seated. I want to encourage us once again that um, we don't look at the, the smallest of the number of the church. I really appreciate what uh, Mommy, Glory, uh, Mommy Grisha told me this morning. And I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God will continue to help every one of us in Jesus' name. Uh, in a situation like this, all what we need to do is what can I contribute to make this church great? And that's why everywhere, uh, every time you see me, I don't want to lose a single member not the i'm not the owner of the church god is the owner of the church uh, but by the grace of the lord i'm a woman being too that put all my life on the line uh, and i pray by the power and the blood of jesus christ god is going to glorify his name in our life in jesus name uh, so uh, one thing I wanted to tell us that anytime we want to look at that, look at that the big church we are looking at, it was started in a day. And then it, from that day, they face a lot of challenges. Some churches even started before us, they have, they have I don't want to use close down. Uh, some of the churches we started with, I don't want to use close, close down again. So, in any challenges like this, all what we need to be thinking is like uh, our mommy you taught today, what can I do? As far as the word of the Lord we are preaching is from the Bible. And every one of us see that, yes, this is the Bible. There is not even if it is only one person that is listening, and then the the word is being manifested in the life of that particular person. The church is church. The church is church. So uh, I want us to continue to encourage each other and keep praying for one another. Uh, there is one thing I always tell my uh, second part, my second one, my wife. They will always call them my second life. That okay. Uh, whatsoever God has given to us as a gift is for the development of the body of Christ. The choir are there, they are singing so that they can make the people happy. The pastor is preaching so that they can exhort the people in the way of the Lord. Uh, those people who are coordinating, they are coordinating so that they can, the, life, the name of the Lord can be exhausted in the life of everybody. And that's why you will see that in many churches, 
uh, we have those people, you can see them as a good coordinator. You will see some people, they are good usher. You will see some people, they are security man. You will see some people, if they handle the Bible with you like this, you will want them to continue. You will see some people, it's just only dire direction. You will see some people, only what they do is follow up. Follow other people up. Uh, no matter what your gift is, look at how you can use this to build the body of the Christ. That this is gift God has given to me. How am I going to be? Uh, two persons can never be Pastor Matthew. Two persons can never be Mama Gracia. Neither can two persons be Mommy Sandy. Most important thing is what is my own contribution to the house of the Lord? Am I a caterpillar? Or am I a pillar? Uh, can you remember the caterpillar? Caterpillar is the uh, butterfly intermediate stage. They destroy. A pillar is a pillar of the house that holds the building. So the question we need to be asking ourselves is that, okay, in this house of the Lord, am I a caterpillar? Or am I a pillar that is building the church? Immediately you discover that. And then another thing is that uh, when people see you, they see Christianity in you. Uh, it's not the matter of the church. It's a, master, it's a matter of Christ that they see in you. So... Let us continue, and I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God is going to help us in Jesus' name. Uh, you will see that I was so worried when my Gracia was not around, and I'm doing all my best to make sure that it's been in the church. Uh, we are not the new church in town, and uh, most of us, pastors, we discuss together. And then we say a lot of challenges that uh, we discuss a lot of challenges we face together. One of those challenges which I want to tell you, I want you to know today. Sometimes you invite people to come to the church. That day, the old member is not around. You got what I'm saying? So now, it is the only invitee that you are invited will be inside the church. So it will be like, is this the church? And then if your leg has not been uh, so sound, like uh, if I use myself as an example, I... Uh, uh, it's a very good thing because I've been in the church not 10 years, not 20 years. I'm thanking God. Uh, so I know our church is big. So I know that it is because we are not in a central place. That's why we are few like this. So I don't look at it. I don't look at the church in this way. God bless you. I look at it from, from the other side. So Either it is only me and my children and my family that is uh, that is there. Uh, I don't look at the church. The pastor is preaching to only me. I don't look at it in that way. I look at what I benefit from what the pastor is preaching. Uh, and I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God will continue to be with every one of us in Jesus' name. Uh, in the word, they always said, a tree cannot make a forest. Now, a single tree, you can call it a forest. So it is all of us together, we are church. And then 
anytime we are here, I want us to be looking at it that we are in the midst of millions of people. Because as we are having service here now, they are having the fear, is it fear, fear, fear or what do they, they call the name of the town? They are having Washington, D.C. They are having in Alexandra. They are having uh, in North Virginia. So they are having in Ohio. They are having all over. It's just because we cannot go to Ohio, and then or we cannot go to Washington, D.C. We say, the pastor said, okay, instead of you to be coming to the Washington, D.C., why can't you be gathering together and then listen to the word. Because I, there was a time I even told him, we want to be coming quarterly so that people can see the church. He said, the problem is that by the time we travel three hours, three hours come, people will be tired. And they have experienced it many times. Last week, uh, we invited somebody, he came. Uh, thank God, uh, Sister Lisa was around that day. Uh, the time we have a single seminar, we invited a couple and they came. We said 8.30, by 8.30 they were here. You won't believe, I was still picking people outside, they were only two sitting down. And then because of the gadgets we are using, they couldn't understand. Let's say I was here and then my son too has not able to get himself up to this level then he just sat down with them and they were so it wasn't clear to them it wasn't clear to them and that's all what uh, uh, the challenges i'm facing and i pray by the power and the blood of jesus christ god is going to solve all the problem in jesus name um there's a lot of things like that that cannot be explaining on the on the pulpit Part of it is transportation. Part of it is, uh, what can I say? Follow up, uh, uh, able to speak to one another uh, in agenda. Agenda. So God is going to help us in Jesus' name. So I want to encourage you also again. Please do not be discouraged. If only your presence. Your presence can take me to heaven. You should be, you should, be, you should be glad about that. If my coming to your house can take you to the heaven, I should be glad about that. As far all what we are discussing, all we are talking about is Bible. So please, I'm encouraging us one again. God will help us in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, I've been, I want to make a sample for us now. When I came, this internet was not working. I think he has done all what he could do uh, since morning. But now that I came, I knew what to do. He is still growing up. They start the, so that's part of the challenges I've been having. And then we have a lot of online people that are always watching us. So please, I want to encourage us again for everyone's sake. God will help us in Jesus' name. And please continue to pray for me too. Uh, the Bible says the road is very, very narrow. And uh, it cannot contain a lot of things. And uh, the grace of the Lord will, will help every one of us. And then uh, we will not miss it in Jesus' name. Almighty God will uphold us. Let's open our aim to aim 214. In two one four.
ministry today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. John 7. John 7. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Then the Jews sought him at the feast, and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him, for some said, He is a good man. Others said, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God, or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go ye about to kill me? The people answered and said, Thou hast a devil, who goeth about to kill thee? Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receive circumcision, but the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me, because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? Howbeit we know this man whence he is, but when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am. And I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. And many of the people believed on him, and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done? The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go, that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles, and teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this, that he said, Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come? In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, 
out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David, and out of the town of Bethlehem, where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. Nicodemus saith unto them, He that came to Jesus by night being one of them, Doth our law judge any man before it hear him, and know what he doeth? They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look. For out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man went unto his own house. May God help us to be pure of the word. On a brand new day, there's a strong wind staring across the ancient graves. The voice that's calling, will you be set free? There's a change of coming, let it start in me. Let it start in me, let it start in me, there's a change a coming, let it start in me, let it start in me, let it start in me, there's a There's a heat consuming every evil plan. There is gold emerging from refining flames. There's a diamond sparkling where the ones washing let it
And everybody shout. The Lord bless you today. Answer your prayers today. And give you beyond your prayers in Jesus' name. Wellness. Everybody shout wellness. It will be well with your soul. Well with your spirit, well with your body, well with your family. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. Everybody sing it is well, it is well. Sing it with a good voice. It is well with my soul. It is 
will. Sing it for the last time. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this day. Beautiful day and great day. A day of great expectation. And we're asking, oh Lord, that the expectation of your people will not be cut short in Jesus' name. Fulfill their desires. Answer their prayers. Touch and transform every life. And do good in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, where there is sickness, let there be healing. Where there is any disturbance, oh Lord, let there be calm. And when there is any fear, Lord, I pray you clear all the fears away in Jesus' name. Your people will be more than conquerors. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. you Consider we're coming to Romans chapter 8 and we're looking at verse 11. We're looking at the resurrection power of Christ and how that impacts the wellness of the body, the healing of the body, the health of the body, the resurrection power and the wellness, wellness in his resurrection power. Look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, the spirit of him, the spirit of God, the spirit of resurrection that raised up Jesus, if he dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also, also, as he did on that resurrection day, he will also, as he did to Christ and he raised him up, he will also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. There's a lot there. It says there is power, the power of the spirit. And the power of resurrection. He traced up Jesus Christ from the dead. And everything that is dead or dying in your body will be quickened today in Jesus' name. Wellness, healing, health, soundness in his resurrection power. The three things we're looking at. Number one, the promise of wellness and health. The promise of wellness and health. Point number two, the prayer for wellness and healing. Healing is there, available for you, available for me. And we pray, and as we pray, God answers our prayers, and you are healed in Jesus' name. The prayer for wellness and healing. Number three, the preservation of wellness through holiness. How do you preserve your healing? How do you preserve your wellness? How do you preserve the miracle that God does in your life? Through a holy life, holy attitude, and holy disposition, holy nature, and a life of holiness, the preservation of wellness through holiness. Number one is the promise. The promise is yours. It will be fulfilled. It will set you free from every sickness. It will set you free from any predicament in your life. In Jesus' name. Let's look at the promise now. Number one, the promise of wellness and health. We're looking at Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 26. 
Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. Look at the promise now. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. It tells us here the condition of fulfillment for the promise. It says, if you will hack into the voice of the word of the Lord, if you will do that diligently, and you will not allow anything to take the word away from your heart, every word he has spoken to us, the word of salvation, the word of repentance, and the word of faith in Christ, having faith in the Lord, and the word of restoration, restitution, and the word of renewal, the word of revival, if you will hack into the voice of the Lord your God. And you will do exactly as he has said. He said, I will put none of these diseases upon you. I claim that. I said, I claim that the disease of Egypt will not be upon your life in Jesus' name. And he said, I am, I am, I am. Not I was, not I will be, but I am. Even at the present time, I am the Lord that he lets thee. That's the promise he gave to the children of Israel. And that's the promise he's giving to every one of us. Isaiah chapter 53. I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 53. We're looking at verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Is looking forward to when Christ will die on the cross of Calvary. And he says the purpose is that he will be wounded for our transgression and bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And tell me what you find there. And with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes, the stripes of suffering, the stripes of agony. And the stripes of punishment laid upon him with those stripes, I am healed. I am healed. You are healed in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 30. And I'm reading from verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee. Let me hear his thunderous amen. He will do it. Nothing can stop him. Satan cannot stop him. Evil spirit cannot stop him. The curse of men or women cannot stop him. Anything that happened in the past cannot stop him. Anything around you there cannot stop him. He says, I will. For I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wants. Internal wants, he will heal. External wants, he will heal. Any kind of uh, cancerous wound, he will heal. He says, I will heal thee of thy wants, says the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. But thank God, your healing time has now come. Jeremiah chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 6. Behold, I will bring it health and kill. There's no incurable disease here. The Lord said, every mountain he will move. Every sickness he will heal. Every disease it will take away. It says, Behold, I will bring it health and kill. I will kill them. I will kill them. Them who? Them where? Them over there? Them in front of me? 
them on that other side, I will kill them. I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. The time is getting near. Healing is running after you. Deliverance is looking for where you're sitting or standing. It is coming. I said it is coming. Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many, many, many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word with his what he cast out the spirits tell me with what with his word that word is coming to you today and he healed all that was sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Zayas the prophet, saying, He took our infirmities and he bare our sicknesses. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Who is soon self? That's Christ. Who is soon self? Not an angel. Who his own self, not a religious man, but Christ himself, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, shall live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. You have been healed. It's now for you to rise and claim that healing is coming your way. Point number two, the prayer for wellness and healing. The prayer for wellness and healing. The Lord expects us to pray and to seek his face so that what he has promised by prayer and faith, we claim. Look at Psalm 107. Psalm 107. I'm reading from verse 17. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Maybe you've been wondering why this, why that in your life. Why this in your body? If you check up very well and you dig deep very well to the lifestyle you are leading, you might find out that iniquities abound. You might find out that carelessness, even sometimes is hygienic carelessness, that we don't take care very well. And because of that, Afflictions come. Those afflictions, the Lord will take away today. Their soul abhors all manner of meat. So seek, they lose appetite, and they draw near to the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. That means they pray, and the Lord will take away all those infirmities in Jesus' name. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, in their trial, in their affliction, in their sickness, and the Lord saveth them out of their distresses. How did he do that? Verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He did it before and he says, I am God. I change not. His power has not changed. His compassion has not changed. And his manifestation of majestic miracles 
that has not changed numbers chapter 21 in numbers chapter 21 reading from verse 4 and he journeyed from mount all by the way of the red sea to compass the land of edom and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way you see there are many people that instead of looking at christ and looking at the lord instead of looking at the word of god and the commandments of god they're looking at the way they're looking at the roughness of the road and they're looking at the slope of the mountain of the of the way they ought to go and because of that they're discouraged and discouragement push them to do something unwholesome verse 5 and the people speak against god can you imagine they had done a lot in their lives and they had got them through quite a lot of dangers diseases and difficulties and now they speak against god and against moses think about that god in heaven had done what no one could do for them man on earth moses had done what no other person on earth had done for them and in the time of discouragement they spoke against god in heaven and they spoke against moses on earth wherefore have ye brought us up out of egypt to die in the wilderness for there is no bread neither is there any water neither is there any water look at these people these were the people the lord told moses to strike the rock before this time and that water will come out and water came out for them out of the rock two times and now they're saying there's no water not any water at all and our soul loathed this light bridge the bread from heaven the lord sent furry serpents among the people that's because of their sin the sin of their tongue and they beat the people and much people of israel died watch over your tongue you will not die prematurely words of anger words of fretting words of worry words of anxiety words of slander words of abuse words of strife they bring problems upon our lives whether those words are spoken by ministers or spoken by members whether they are spoken by people who are high in authority or they are spoken by people who are low in recognition words of anger and words of anxiety bring problems look at verse 6 and the lord said very serpents among the people and they beat the people and much people of israel died therefore the people came to moses and they said we have sinned for we are spoken against the lord confession will bring kill i said confession will bring kill they said they are spoken against the lord and against thee this was not just confession it was restitution you see in our lives we shouldn't bottle our grief and our guilt in our lives we shouldn't hide our guilt we shouldn't hide the condemnation your conscience tells you that your tongue has led you astray your life and manner of life has led you astray you repent and you do the works meet for repentance you make restitution and it says pray unto the lord for us they were now asking for prayer as you're asking for prayer and prayers are made they will touch your life it will heal your soul it will heal your spirit 
it will heal your body. That have an amen around the corner there. Pray that you take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a furry serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that, tell me, that how many people? How many people today that everyone that is speaking when he looketh upon it shall live? And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, any man, I'm looking at you, any man, I want to check up who is the any man there. Any man, any man, the low and the high, the newcomer and the old timers, the men and the women, the young and the old, if the serpent had beaten any man, a worker, a member, if the serpent had beaten any man, full-time, part-time, when he beheld the serpent of brass, tell me, tell me, you will live. I said you will live. He lived. Look at Jeremiah chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 17. Verse 14, here is the prayer, the prayer for wellness, the prayer for healing. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. It's how simple the prayer is, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. You'll praise God. You will testify. The Lord will touch you and roll all those problems away in answer to your prayer. And you will praise the Lord in Jesus' name. In James chapter 5. James chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. That's an emblem of the Holy Spirit. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. It never fails. The prayer of faith never fails. It will not fail in your life. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they, those sins shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. He's still telling us that righteousness is the very foundation of wellness. You want to be healed. You want to be well, and you want to remain well, remain healthy. It says, if your conscience convicts you of any offense, small or great, against your wife, against your husband, against a member of the church, against a co-worker, against your company, if the Spirit of God convicts you of any offense, of anything you shouldn't have done against your place of work, you will confess your faults to the appropriate authority there and then pray one for another that she may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, somebody tell me out aloud, availeth much. 
it will avail in Jesus' name. Point number three now, the preservation of wellness through holiness. The preservation of wellness, of soundness, of health through holiness. We're coming back to Exodus chapter 15.